has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Hi, how about this guy, Howie Roseman? He, he also snagged uh, Trey Sermon today. What doesn't this guy do? He does something every day of the week. Uh, it has been a very good, not just off season, but couple of days for Howie Roseman, the Eagles GM. That's for sure, Scotty. I was reading the report. They were actually trying to work out a trade with the Niners last week for Sermon. Uh, weren't able to do it. They end up releasing him. They snag him on waivers, so he didn't have to give up anything. Uh, to get him and he had an open roster spot after trading Rager yesterday so nice work there uh, by Howie Roseman as he continues to build that team unbelievable right, more NFL for you I was gonna play you uh this guy Denzel Mims like crying at his lock but honestly like does he matter like he Who doesn't cares? matter like like please, this guy don't matter he's all a man he's not even starting he's, you know, he's, they didn't trade him like he's like fifth on the depth chart like I'm just you know what I don't need him crying. I thought it was more exciting to play the head coach, Robert Sala, uh, because he still believes he's going to win Super Bowls with the Jets. Here's coach, Scotty. <laughs> you did say last year, I think on multiple occasions, that this team is going to win the championships. I think plural. Yep. So I'm wondering, we haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I still believe we're going to win championships here. I think um, when you look at Joe and his staff and, and the way he communicates with us as a coaching staff, um, our, our process is too good. Um, I, I think the players that we've brought in are, are made of the right stuff, and the way this organization communicates, um, the way uh, Woody and Christopher uh, just give us whatever we need with regards to player acquisitions and, and being in this building and their support, it's, it's too good not for, this, for this not to work. And uh, just really excited again to just continue to build this roster and, and develop these young men and, and uh, live up to the promise that we made when, when we first got here. I mean, uh, not even Mafia believes a word that just came out of that guy's <laughs> mouth, honestly. Like, are you kidding me? Like, what is happening here? Listen, I said yesterday, I'll say it again, I hope they're good uh, for Mafia's sake. That's great. I don't wish ill will on anybody, but uh, they, no. I've been here for 25 years. They've had two good seasons, and, and they suck. Yeah. Even then, they couldn't get it done. They, they couldn't get it done if the other team didn't show up for the title game. So uh, all I know is they don't win championships, and their quarterback's injured, and even if he comes back, you know he's going to get injured again. I mean, you just know it, right? He can't even run without getting injured. He injured himself. It's one thing to get lit up and get injured. It's another thing to run, you know, 10 yards and you're done for five weeks uh, having a scope. Honestly, I just don't believe in him. I said yesterday they're, they're preseason killers. That's what they are. They win every game in a the preseason. They beat the Giants. whoop de doo They didn't let's cover. Go to New they didn't cover the yes, five. Indeed. Let's, let's go to New England now. Of course, a lot's been made about the Patriot offense in training camp and preseason, whatever. Here's Mac Jones, guy. Now, if you ever thought or didn't think that Bill Belichick takes these guys and, like, puts them in a room and teaches them – forcibly how to talk to the media and not to say anything. This is the clip that shows you that he absolutely does it. Here's Mac Jones talking about the A lot other. of learning experiences, and that's always um, room for growth. I'm going so to be really boring. I think we've I'm going to say the same thing over and, and over. That they're happening Here I now, and I feel confident in what we're doing. Um, we just got to go out there and do it for 60 minutes, and um, that's and just play minutes. by play. And, and obviously during practice, same thing, play by play. Go out there and execute it, and – um, yeah, once you, you execute. turn on the game film and you look back and there's, you know, 45, 50 good plays and, you know, hopefully you come out on top. But uh, it's more about executing it and, and doing your job individually. And Got to do your job. We all do, do that. Job. 11 guys do yeah. it close to right every play. All 11 guys. And you'll have a good play. <laughs> all 11 guys. I mean, you job. know, it really is only about <laughs> what can we get out of these players in pressers that's funny because everything else is just a load of shack. I mean, I'll say oh, this, though. I believe in this kid, and I believe in Belichick, and I believe in the way they play football up there. They win games. You know it. You suffered for 20 years watching them win. I don't oh, I buy into this. They're going to suck. They just 
won 10 games, went to the playoffs and lost. It is what it is. Only one team wins it all. Everybody else sucks at the end of the day if you don't get it done. We welcome all of our radio affiliates, Sirius XM, Sports Map, Sports Byline, coast to coast on a Thursday. Everybody's doing it. They just won't admit it. Uh, the Dolphins named their captains today. Honestly, every team named their captains pretty much, Scotty. But for some reason, once again, the, the two of focus in Miami uh, looms very large. They made an enormous deal about Tua being named a captain of the Dolphins today. Even our boy Mike McD, we'll try to get him uh, in the mix talking about it tomorrow. I, I don't know why it was so earth-shattering. Every quarterback on every team is basically the captain. Uh, but there you go. Joe Burrow, Scotty, dealing with – go ahead. Talk about Tua because you know what? No, Joe's really I long. Just, we'll play him when we come back. No, he, he just needs to win. All this other nonsense yeah. is like uh, potatoes, bread – you know, maybe a little soup with your dinner, but it's really all about the steak. Are you going to win? I, I'm, I, I just need him to get on the field finally and play and so we can see it because I'm tired of all this other nonsense. Like, I told you last week, why the both of them, Hill and McDaniel, have to prop him up so much with he has the best arm. Now today we make a huge deal that he was named the team captain. My guy needs to just get out there and play football, Scotty, so that way all this other nonsense goes away. That's what he really needs. I actually believe they're going to be uh, solid. We'll see. I mean, yeah. last year with Flores nine in a row, I mean, who was laughing then? But they still didn't make right. the playoffs. The morning after. What did you make of this decision by San Francisco to retain Jimmy Garoppolo, have him on the roster in the QB room for 2022? Well, what we heard the entire offseason was how the 49ers were trying to shop Jimmy G the entire time. But they weren't hearing back great offers. Now, it doesn't mean he's going to be there for the whole entire season. As you know, it gives them about two more months before the trade deadline, and they could actually move him before then. The Sports Grid Network. They sent out a Jordan Montgomery, who evidently is the best pitcher in baseball. I know it's the Cubs. I don't care. But it looks like maybe word is getting out that, you know what? We don't really have an offensive coordinator. Why don't you guys get used to calling real plays with real players in the game and see if we can work something out over, let's just say, the first half. The Early Line, only on SportsGrid. Fantasy Sports Today. Cam Akers was one of the bigger stories of last year, returning very early from an ACL injury. And, uh, and, and you know, what a, what a really great story it was. But unfortunately, didn't look very good when he came back. Now, a lot can be attributed to that. And I guess that's why we'll do a deeper dive here. His ADP is 18 in terms of running backs taken. His positional ranking is 18. And overall, is going approximately in the third round. The Sports Grid Network. the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play learn from the world's best dfs players lineup building tools expert projections and advanced stats change the way you play the game dominate the competition dailyroto.com the player's choice Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com.
So 34C said to me, uh, you need to help me with this app. And I said, no problem. She said, I really need the help right now. I said, no problem. I'll be right with you. So, and then she's like, I mean, are you going to help me or not? I'm like, yeah, I'm coming. Don't worry about it. She's like, what's the deal? Are you going to do this or not? I go, yeah, look, it's the BetMGM app. Bet $10 on any baseball game. You get $200 if either team hits a home run. And you got to use the bonus code MLBHR2022. And she said to me something to the effect of, I was talking about, uh, you know, the LA app. And I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Just get the BetMGM app. You don't need all these other clothing store apps. Just get the BetMGM app. Bet on baseball, 10 bucks, 200 comes your way. And you can give me the 200 and then I'll go spend it on more bets. And she said, what's the code again? I said, MLBHR2022. Then she said, you want to make love? I said, sure, I'll be there in a minute. I'm busy. I'm there picking games. I don't have time to do all this scheduled hey. sex and everything. No, that's okay. I mean, you got to slide it in there in a midweeker. Uh, make sure that something happens for you. Good job with the BetMGM app as well. All right, Thank here you. we go. A couple more football before we get to all of tonight's college football, Scotty. Uh, last clip from the NFL I have for you is your boy, Joey Silk. Joe Burrow. Of course, Burrow, Scotty, is now a very famous man after taking the Bengals to the Super Bowl, winning a very national famous. championship at LSU. Joe Namath. Joe Burrow's done a lot. Uh, here he is, Scotty, talking about dealing with all of this fame that he now has. Here's Burrow. Joe, with an ever-increasing profile, including the SI cover story, uh, how do you handle this increase in celebrity? People want to know more and more about you. Where did that philosophy come from? What's the best way to gauge this? Just keep the business part outside of the... It's different from the football part. You know, you're always trying to build your brand in, in a certain way, but you, know, you can't let it affect the way you prepare in the off-season and get your workouts in and prepare throughout the year, you know, getting your film watched. And so... And you have a, a strategy, and then when it's time to go, it's time to go. If you had to describe your brand, what would it, how would you describe it? That's, what's, that's the beauty of a brand. You don't have to describe it yourself. You guys do it for me. <laughs> what's the worst part about being a celebrity? Um, you know, whenever you go in public, it always just feels like a production. Um, you'd like to go out and sit at a, a dive bar every now and then, but that's not reality. Whoa, he's going down to the dive bar for quarter beer night with peanuts Joey in the bowl. Little, little quarter beer night. There. Even looking at him up there, like, he just has that look of, like, everybody's all American. I mean, Joe Burrow, Joey Silk, the hair looks great, smiling. That's the guy now, Scotty. He's one of the guys in the league, Joe Burrow. Until he's on his back and the next guy comes along. Believe me, you, they yes, don't care about you the yes. minute you're on your back. Oh, no, they do not. That's And remember, sure. he didn't get it done. <laughs> uh, they keep acting like he won the Super Bowl. He no, didn't. No, no. In fact, he probably should have threw the ball more to T. Higgins, as you like to say all the time. Maybe do you think he'll go to another ball. Super Bowl? Uh... It's very tough to say. We've seen so many guys go and we think they're going to get back, and they never do. It's hard. It's the real hard. The over one. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say no. Believe it or not. Under. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say the under. I'm gonna say the under uh, for Joe. You want to know why? Because it's the Bengals, and yeah. you know, even though they went last year. We've seen teams do that, right? Remember the time Arizona made it, you know, with Kurt Warner and Larry Fitzgerald yeah. and all. Yeah. Oh, the Cardinals are—they're a team now. They're going to be back all the time. Have they been back in the Super Bowl? No. I—I I, I feel like that's going to be kind of like Cincinnati. I don't know if they're going to—they're not going to be this. The Steelers handled them every single year. Steelers hand that was some game. That was a hell of a game. That's that was a great game. Uh, was, Harrison's was ninety-nine yarder. A good one. Holmes in the corner from Big Ben. <laughs> Yeah, I remember was it was great. like it was yesterday. Back and forth, those teams went late in the fourth quarter. That was a really good Super Bowl. Uh, Eagles running back Miles Sanders back at practice after a long layoff. Hopefully going to be good for week one. The Ravens signed Kenyon Drake after the Raiders got rid of him. The Bills finally have a punter, Scotty. Uh, <laughs> signing former Bronco Sam Martin. My favorite quote in the entire release 
uh, from the general manager, Brandon Bean. You know, we really wanted somebody with experience at that position. Oh, like the rookie that you cut last week? You know, that he had all the experience, right? You were going to play a rookie. You were going to have a rookie as your punter. So don't give us this garbage about all the experience that you wanted. All right? We wanted somebody with experience he in also, that position. He also didn't have much sure uh, did. party experience either, apparently. No, 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 not at all. And Bruce Arians, I guess, uh, is making the rounds. I thought he still worked for the Bucs. Uh, he says that the Bucs team is the most talented roster they've had in Tampa. Uh, so good luck uh, down there this year. If only Tom uh, can reconcile with Giselle, although you say he'll do better this year if he does break up with Giselle. So yeah, be and then I read a story about <laughs> Bruce's health. Like, there's some story out there now about how oh, this guy was, right. like, near death. Yeah, yeah. That's why he's not coaching anymore. He doesn't anymore. look it. I, I watched – I saw a couple of the clips of him in these interviews. He looks all right. He looks like he's getting sun, playing golf, smoking stogies, have, having a little late night nightcap. Bruce is doing well, okay. There you go. He's not coaching There you football go. He should anymore. be dead soon then. He's, he's doing just fine. All right. College football officially starts tonight. Last Saturday, Scotty, that was just like, I said this to Lisi last night on the radio. Last Saturday, that week zero, that's like when your aunt and uncle come over a week before Christmas. And, like, they bring you a little present a week before, and it's like, all right, you know, I, I need the real thing to get here. The real thing's here now. We start it tonight, and we get it going with the backyard brawl for the first time in over 10 years. West Virginia and Pitt. Let's hear from Pitt coach Pat Narduzzi, Scotty. The first half of this clip talking about the history of the backyard brawl and keeping the kids in control. The second half saying, I don't care about us being defending ACC champs. That doesn't matter anymore. Here's Narduzzi. You want to have extra juice, um, and, uh, but we got to have your composure too. So, um, you know, it's a brawl. It's a fight. Uh, there's composure. I haven't had that um, with our team, but maybe they'll read it on – um, you know, Jerry tweeting it out today or something. But, um, you know, we have to have composure. And we didn't have great composure uh, against Miami last year. It had some personal fouls, which would drive me nuts. So I don't want to get them too hyped um, because they got to be smart and play smart and, and not get, you know, get uh, out of control. You know, that was last year. I mean, golly, that was so long ago. You know, uh, that quarterback's playing right next door. Um, and, uh, and he's not going to play for us this year. So, um, you know, Last year was done, it. and this is a new team. That's why we're going to find out what we got Thursday night. I think that's the important thing. Is just, you know, no, nobody cares what you did last year. Um, it's about right now. I think uh, he's got the kid Slovis from USC now, and he won't even say Pickett's name. That's kind of bizarre since all the money he's got in his bank account is because of him. Uh, his extension, everything else, <laughs> is because of Kenny Pickett. And that title he got is because of Kenny Pickett. And now he's got Slovis, and they're taking on a West Virginia team that was terrible last year. Brown's yep. team has under double-digit returners from that horrible team. And Pitt is uh, bringing back most of their team except Pickett. They lost very few guys. They, although they did lose Addison to USC, went out West. Smart kid to go play for Lincoln Riley. I'd play there over Pitt any day of the week if I had my choice. But you can't tell me that Pitt isn't better than West Virginia going into this game. Now, I know it's a rivalry, but that's all in the uh, hype and on blood and on TV and radio and on the Internet and everything else. The reality is one team is allegedly uh, deeper and more loaded than the other team. West Virginia hasn't been good in football in 20 years. Seven and a half is the number tonight, Scotty. They're playing at the place uh, that the Steelers uh, play at now. That's where they're playing the right. game, as you like to call it. The place the Steelers play. Seven and a half, 51 and a half, actually down to 50 and a half at this very second. I'm on pit tonight, Scotty. I think they're going to absolutely whack them in that game. That's where I'm going. Yeah. They're playing where the Steelers play, and I'm doing the same thing you're doing, and I'm going to watch, and I'm going to have it all going. Heineken's, popcorn, swearing. I mean, the whole deal. The dog's already <laughs> hiding under the table. He knows.
Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's Game Time Decisions, only on Sports Grid. him but I, I just don't see him being on the field nearly as much as he was last season maybe the touchdown numbers will, will have him in that tight end one category earlier his career he would have gotten out. I mean I guess he had 108 rushing yards but six rushing touchdowns in his career so it doesn't give you any upside there Carr, to be honest for me just is not a guy I ever end up targeting fantasy sports today only on sports grid you might be the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play learn from the world's best dfs players lineup building tools expert projections and advanced stats change the way you play the game dominate the competition dailyroto.com the player's choice All right, Carver High, let's talk about the other big game tonight that's at ross Aid in lovely West Lafayette, Indiana, an hour from Bloomington. Uh, the Hoosiers' arch rival, uh, Purdue Boilermakers, are taking on James Franklin and Penn State. Now, Penn State's beaten Purdue nine consecutive times, and they're laying three and a half in this game in ross Aid at Purdue, and Purdue's got their entire team back and their quarterback, and they're a nine-win team. Penn State brings back Clifford, good quarterback. If you want to call him that, they went seven and six. So what's the skinny on this big game tonight in the Hoosier State? Yeah, kind of uh, two different sides of the coin last year, Scotty. Penn State started the season great and then was a completely awful over the second half, including losing that bowl game to Arkansas, finishing seven and six. Purdue had two wins against top five teams at the time in Iowa and Michigan State. Let's hear from James Franklin. Uh, he says that Penn State has plenty of experience opening the season on the road. If you remember last year in week, week one, they went to Wisconsin and beat the Badgers to open up the season. In fact, as Franklin loves to remind everybody, they've started on the road pretty much every year, seven years in a row, and 12 of the last 13, they've opened the Big Ten season on the road. Franklin's not happy about it either. Here we go. Yeah, I think last year going to Wisconsin um, has has put us in position to be prepared with our returners to understand 
you know, uh, what we need to do to be successful. Obviously, going on the road at Wisconsin is, is a big deal. Going on the road at Purdue um, is a big deal. Going on the road 12 out of the last 13 years um, also also helps with that. How is that um, possible? So, yeah, again, we got to do it this year. Um, but there is experience with our team, uh, with our team, you know, going on the road. Uh, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. How in God's name have they been plucked to start their season 12 of the last 13 Baker's dozen years on the road? Who does the scheduling in the Big Ten that just continues to stick a fork in their arse? Yeah, and uh, at the Big Ten media days over the summer, Scotty, back when they were in Indy or wherever they were, uh, their right. athletic director was complaining about it too, saying every year we start our Big Ten schedule on the road. Doesn't make any sense, but they got it done at Wisconsin last year. Will they get it done tonight at Purdue, Scotty? Like you said, laying the three and a half road favorites that hook is scaring me. I might take Purdue with that little extra hook behind it, Scotty. Yeah, look, I, I laid it out before. Purdue has a, a loaded gun. They're a good team, well-coached. Brom, all I know is uh, they won nine. They're tough. It's a hostile environment. Everybody's going to be drunk and lit out of their minds. going to be 80 degrees. They have a shot to give Penn State a game for sure. I like the three and a half. More than I like the buck 45 on the money line, I'm just strictly going spread here and taking a stab at the spoiler makers. Uh, I know it, I'm worried about that Penn State's just owned them, owned them nine in a row. That is troubling to me. But I got to tell you, um, Penn State is a great school, a great atmosphere for football, 104,000. Uh, the whole thing is fantastic. But I have to tell you, it has never been – like when it was with Joe Paterno, with James Franklin. It has never been the same. In my view, they are overrated always. They always talk about Penn State like they matter. When you go seven and six, you don't matter at all. I'm with you, and I think Franklin is a touch overrated as well. I know he's been there a little while now. Making a uh, fortune. At the end of the day, what's he done? Where, where, nothing. I haven't seen Penn State. Uh, nothing, exactly. Uh, then everybody says, well, who's going to get better than James Franklin? I don't know. Uh, we shall see. Let's go to Mike Gundy now, Scotty. Of course, Oklahoma State opens their season against the Chippewas, Central Michigan. Now, Gundy always remembers the tough losses, Scotty, like the last time the Chippewas came to Stillwater and beat them in 2016 in a big upset on the Cooper Rush Hail Mary that shouldn't have been. Here's Gundy. Yeah, anytime we lose, they're painful. Uh, you know, people ask all the time uh, about certain games. You know, I only wake up in the middle of the night thinking of games that we didn't win. I never think of, like, I haven't woke up yet thinking about the Fiesta Bowl, but I sure woke up thinking about the Big 12 championship game. And uh, those games you never get rid of, and I don't know why that is. I wish, they, I wish they'd come up with some type of medication that would make it go the other direction. But uh, we didn't play good. Uh, we, we didn't play good in that game, and we didn't put ourselves in a position to where that didn't matter. We just didn't play good. And unfortunately, sometimes that happens. I, I, don't, I wish I knew why, because if I did, I would have certainly solved it prior to, but we just didn't play good that day. <laughs> uh, real quick, uh, so I've been in 21 title games, and I've won 11, lost 10. I only remember the exact specifics yeah. of the losses like it was yesterday. I remember every loss – down to the shot that beat us or the how it ended, how we lost, how we blew it. I don't remember any, really, of the details of the wins. I just know I got 11 and I got 10 losses and 21 trips. It's so true. You remember the losing. I will say this, Mike. Uh, I'm not expecting that tonight, and no. any kind of upset with the chips. They don't have Cooper Rush. And I thought that uh, Notre Dame team blew that Fiesta Bowl. Oh. And uh, Oklahoma State is loaded. They got everybody back and their quarterback. And all I know is it's 21 and a hook. But I, I got to tell you, for me, they got to beat them by yes. 24 or more. They, they just have to beat uh, Central Michigan. Central Michigan does not matter at all. They need to beat their ass tonight. I mean, come on. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, I like Oklahoma State to cover that big number tonight. like the under in that game as well. It's got like a little feel of like 35-10 Oklahoma State tonight. 
we can get ourselves over that underneath that 53 and a half here. Here's the rest of the games tonight. There is some big lumber, Scotty, in a couple of these spots. We already mentioned Oklahoma State, which is actually down a point from our board there, 21 and a half. Uh, as you say, oh, we do got the 21 up there. There you go. Tennessee laying some big numbers, five tutties plus against Ball State. You've got Minnesota laying the five tutties. You've got Missouri and Louisiana Tech tonight. If any of these big spreads, Scotty, I'm taking the points with La Tech in Mizzou, Columbia tonight to cover the big number. That's not a bad bet. I think, you know, I'll take a stab on that uh, testy tech, 35 and a half in Knoxville. I'm not sure, you know, all I hear is Tennessee every year. And like, can they even score yeah. 35 points? I mean, honestly. So, and then uh, Minnesota, I don't think they can score 36 points, but they are playing, I think, the worst football program in the history of football. <laughs> I actually like the under in the Minnesota game more than the 36 and a half. I think Minnesota does beat them handily. That's a big number. They can win that game like 31 nothing. I think it's an under. If you want to play that game, I'd play Minnesota to the under. And I like the under in the Tennessee game as well. And I like the under in that Missouri uh, La Tech game as well. Uh, here's a couple others for you. You have some schools playing some FCS opponents tonight, including Wake Forest and VMI. UCF is playing South Carolina State. Arizona State playing Northern Arizona, 24 and a half in that one. Fresno State with a heavy number against Cal Poly late night on FS1. I mean, uh, Fresno State is going to impale Poly. But I wouldn't be surprised the Lumberjacks cover against Arizona State. They suck, too. Uh, and I've heard about that. They got every NFL coach in the world coaching out there. What they have is yeah. every NFL coach that's retired living on a golf course making way too much money is what they got going. Because they don't win. Yeah. They don't win, but they're all making millions out there. And I'm friends with half of them. And they're all lapping it up and golfing on fancy golf courses and living in fat condos. <laughs> Believe me, you, out in Tempe. <laughs> Uh, I'm on that under, by the way. I got it at six and a half a couple weeks ago. It's at five and a half now. I think it's going to be a long year for her, maybe his last one <laughs> in the desert with Arizona State. Uh, here we go. Odds to win the SEC, Scotty. I gave you some group of five ones yesterday. Alabama, of course, the favorite, minus 140. Georgia, plus 150. And then... It extends pretty deep to the long shots. Texas A&M, Hendon Hooker in Tennessee at 40 to 1. Everybody's got the money and the tickets on that one, Scotty. Everyone loves a hooker. Give me Vandy to win the SEC. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Vandy off the big win out in the islands. Uh, you never they know. Look good. We do know. It's not going to be Vandy. It's a whole new day big, down in Nashville. Big. Clark Lee getting it done. Uh, Big Ten, Ohio State's the favorite as we start the season, minus 225. Michigan, 6-1, to one, and then there goes everybody else, all the West teams that never beat the East ones in the championship game. Listen, the odds for the Big Ten. I mean, that's it's already over. Ohio State's schedule is so easy. I think in um, you know weeks four through nine, they play only Pop Warner teams, <laughs> and all of them well, are in Columbus. I mean, honestly, like, I looked at their schedule today and did a, a bit on it, and I'm like, it, that is the easiest schedule I've ever seen in my life. I mean, honestly, and Michigan, uh, listen, they're going to kill Michigan. And you talk about Penn State crying they got a tough road game to start the season. Ohio State doesn't play anyone nice. at all. <laughs> They do get – look, I know. And for, and when it goes to non-conference, if you give me one really good non-conference game, I can take you playing two really bad teams. Like, they're playing Notre Dame. All right, I'll give them a pass on their other non-conference games. It's the teams that schedule all their non-conference games with nobodies that really gets me going. At least like they're Michigan. playing Notre Dame. I'll, like Michigan, Colorado State, Hawaii, and UConn uh, on the Michigan schedule to start the year, Scotty. Uh, tomorrow, I'll give you the ACC, the Big 12, and the Pac-12 as we head into the weekend for all the rest of the big games. All right, we're going to talk to Bill Bender next from the Sporting News, and we'll get his thoughts on the big college football weekend ahead on Coast to Coast.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game penis. time decisions. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take it for one. In half. game, oh, live, man. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. He's ADP somewhere around the eighth round. He's a borderline starter for most in fantasy football, but I tend to agree with you. I, I think that of that range of quarterbacks between like 10 and 15, he seems pretty safe. He does seem pretty safe, and you also know that you're going to have some good spike weeks with him. You know, when Van Jefferson scores one of those long touchdowns, the three touchdown Cooper Cup games. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. What did you make of this decision by San Francisco to retain Jimmy Garoppolo, have him on the roster in the QB room for 2022? Well, what we heard the entire offseason was how the 49ers were trying to shop Jimmy G the entire time. But they weren't hearing back great offers. Now, it doesn't mean he's going to be there for the whole entire season. As you know, it gives them about two more months before the trade deadline, and they could actually move him before then. The Sports Grid Network. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The early line. Going for 50 home runs now with still a lot of room left here. The player special is out there. Over 61 and a half home runs is plus 285. I know the Yankees lost, and yes, that matters. But Aaron Judge is just having a special, special season. 50 is a huge marker number there. He gets that last night. And then we're trying to take a look at where that's going to be in the future. 59 and a half would be up next because 60 is the big marker. Only on Sports Grid. All right, Bill Bender is with this morning news, and uh, Bill used to do uh, Pharrell on a bench on CBS with me for years, talking about college football. We finally got him on Sports Grid TV on Coast to Coast. Let's bring him in. He's going to be at the uh, Horseshoe on Saturday night in prime time for the Buckeyes and the Fighting Irish. New coach for Notre Dame. We saw him uh, blow the Fiesta Bowl, uh, but this is his first regular season game with Notre Dame. And what a way to start your career going to uh, Columbus, where he played linebacker, I think, for four years for the Buckeyes. He claims uh, going back to his alma mater means nothing to him. He's completely focused on the job at hand. And we all know that he's lying. When you play at Ohio State and you got those Buckeye stickers on your helmet, you never stop talking about Ohio State the rest of your life. Kirk Herb Street's another homer for them. We know how it goes. He's going back into the den of iniquity against a team that could win the national championship, Bill. Vegas is daring you to take that 17 and a half, too, from the 13 where it opened. I mean, it just keeps going right. up and up. And, you know, I grew up in Ohio, too, and went to a Catholic school. So I have a good cross section of uh, Notre Dame and Ohio State fans on my phone. And, the Notre Dame fans were backpedaling this week, so I had to give them the old uh, Rudy one-liner where I said, you're a captain and an All-American. Start acting like it. You know, go in. They're, they're number five, Scott. They're ranked number five. Yeah, it's time for them 
to act like the number five team in the country, go in and, and make a game of it. If they get boat raced out of the shoe, I, I, people are going to react to it how they should, but I think they should be able to keep it in within 17 and a half if they're the number five team in the country. Do you believe that they are the number five team in the country? And if they lose this game and play poorly, they will drop – uh, like nobody's business below the 10. They'll be uh, literally, they'll be 14 or 15 in the country at best if they get smoked. Well, I think that top four is solid, right? Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Clemson. Now, okay, if it's not Notre Dame, is it Texas A&M? They lost four games last year. They're, they're inconsistent from year to year, week to week. Is it Michigan coming off the college football playoff? But uh and it actually might be them, by the way, because I heard you in the last segment talk about Ohio State's soft schedule. Michigan has a soft schedule, too, all the way till the part, point where I think they could get 10-1 and one and get to the shoe that way. Is it Utah? What if Utah loses to Florida in week one and Oregon loses to Georgia? What are we going to do with the Pac-12 from there? And I think Florida's got a decent chance to pull that upset. Wow, I, you might be right. It's a tough place to play in that heat. Uh, in the swamp, and you know it's going to be uh, 90 degrees with 90% humidity. I saw, and, and no comparison, but I saw Charlotte wilt down in Boca last week at nighttime with the same 80% humidity. In the second half, they wanted to get on the bus. Uh, they were dying. So I think Utah is not going to know what hit them when they play in those conditions. But uh, let's go back to Ohio State for a second. They play, and you heard me talk about the schedule, and you talked about Michigan's. They have one thing in mind this year, and it ain't Notre Dame. It's to beat Michigan's ass in that game in Columbus after Thanksgiving, and you know it. And if they, I think they're going to run the tables. If they run the tables and beat their ass, they're going to that playoff, and they're going to play for a national championship. Do you feel that strongly about Ryan Day's team that they could actually run the tables? Yeah, and it's really hard to spot a loss. You know, you mentioned it too. All the tough games are at home. Notre Dame at home. They'll be a double-digit favorite when they play Michigan, even if Michigan's 10-1. and one. The two crossover games against Iowa and Wisconsin, those are good Big Ten West schools, but they're not winning in Columbus, or nobody's going to pick them to win those games. Their toughest right. game on the road is probably Michigan State or Penn State. So, yeah, I think they go – they probably do run the table. They win the Big Ten. It's hard not to like lightly pencil in an Ohio State Alabama rematch because Scott, I think Alabama is going to be nasty. They're, they're both of these teams are talking angry. Just listen to Will Anderson talk. Listen to Ryan Day talk. Listen to anybody on both these teams talk. They're really mad about what happened last year. Yeah, they are. And uh, so, do you feel that uh, Alabama is going to live up to all this hype? that they're unbeatable and that they're number one and that they're loaded and they're back and they got young back and that they're going to go do it all again. Well, I rewind back to last year when they lost to Georgia and, and you remember the clip at the end of the game and Nick Saban kind of motioned down and had Will Anderson and Bryce Young sit down and say, you know, his piece about what he expected for next year. And it doesn't hurt when you have the best defensive player on one side and Will Anderson and a top two pick and the returning Heisman Trophy winner and Bryce Young, but they're going to have breakout players like Jameer Gibbs and Dallas Turner. And I think on our top 50 big board at Sporting News for next year, there are 10 Alabama guys in the top 50. <laughs> I mean, that's 20% of the best players in the country play for Alabama. So, yeah, I think they're going to be pretty good. I think they're going to be focused. There are a couple road potholes on the schedule that they're going to have to avoid but I think, just like you said, Ohio State has Michigan in mind and what they want to do to them. Alabama probably feels the same way about Georgia. And how do you think Georgia's going to do, Bill? Uh, they got their quarterback back. They lost the rest of the team to the NFL in a matter of 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> everybody. Everybody. I think they lost their water boy to the NFL. The defensive they did. water boy, of course. Yeah, like – uh, made a lot of money. So when, they, <laughs> when they replaced 15 guys – um, it's tough. I, I do think they have enough on the defensive side, guys like Jalen Carter, guys like Kaylee Ringo, guys like Nolan Smith, and then Stetson Bennett, a quarterback that people wanted to bench before the championship game, is working around a good offense. Brock Bowers is good, a couple freshman running backs. And all that said, I think Oregon could cover against them Saturday. 
It's a lot of points. Why are we doing these top 10 games and getting excited about them if the spread is 17 and a half? To me, it's just on the underdog to go in there and play a little bit. I think Oregon can hang around for a little bit as long as Bo Nix doesn't turn the ball over. We remember what Oregon did last year in Columbus. Correct. And well, Yeah, I mean, and with, even with Dan Lanning, got some skill position guys that can play, like their linebackers. Um, don't like that they have to go to Georgia and play the game, but – you know, this could be a potentially really good or really bad day for the Pac-12, Scott, and I can't figure out which one it's going to be. Uh, I have to ask you a question with regards to the Pac-12. Now, I, I don't worry about Arizona. It's a basketball school. But they're playing at San Diego State in their new stadium, and they've had this massive Brady Hoke distraction with this uh, punter and these two other football players that are all gone the kid who raises done in the NFL, it took a matter of five minutes and they got rid of him uh, with the gang rape allegations that no one's ever been arrested yet. And the SDPD, uh, you know, who knows what they're doing. The school let them handle it. How do you play a football game with all that going on? Will San Diego State be able to handle Arizona or will they screw that up? It's a lot. I mean, you, you can't ignore all that noise even with the new stadium coming, we do an underdog challenge at sporting news each week where we have to pick three underdogs to win outright. And I, I, I picked Arizona, you know, I think with that plus six, Jaden Delora at quarterback, kind of a fresh start. And all of those distractions you mentioned, not to mention the PAC 12 element to it, right? A PAC 12 team doesn't want to go to San Diego state and lose. They take that kind of personally out there in the West. And I got Arizona winning in a, in a close one. You know, it won't surprise me if San Diego State wins, but I can't help think like you that when you have that going on, and I believe Brady Hoke left the press conference early, earlier this week, it's obviously on the minds in the building of what happened there. What do you think Cincinnati's going to do in Fayetteville? I think that might be the game of the week. Uh, it's a nod to the program that they can lose eight guys impact guys, guys like Ahmad Gardner, Desmond Ritter, Jerome Ford, and still be a six and a half point dog in Fayetteville. I like Arkansas's offense. I love KJ Jefferson, uh, that Kendall Browell's offense, it works. I do think Arkansas is going to cover just because Cincinnati has so many holes with players that were impact players, but I don't think it means we're done hearing about Cincinnati, you know, just because they're in the group of five this year, that's a program that Luke Fickle's going to stick around for a while, and I wouldn't be surprised if they still make it to the New Year's Day 6, despite that, uh, you know, what could be a tough day there Saturday in Fayetteville. How about Memphis? Can they give uh, Leach and, and uh, Mississippi State a game in Starkville at 16 and a hook? They did last time. You know, there was a lot of wildness in that last game. Uh, you know, Mississippi State, they're hard to predict because they're going to throw it around with Will Rogers all day. We know that. This is a big year for Mike Leach because I think the honeymoon phase is over. That SEC West is a wild division where I think we have Alabama figured out, Scott, but two through seven is fluid to me. Like if you told me LSU would finish second or seventh, I wouldn't bat an eye. And it's kind of the same thing with Mississippi State. They could finish anywhere between three through six, and you can't be losing to Memphis if you want to do that. So uh, Sunday, uh, the game at the Superdome has uh, Brian Kelly's debut with LSU against Florida State. I see all these people think Florida State's going to beat them because LSU doesn't have anything. Uh, well, what has Florida State had besides nothing? Well, they beat Duquesne. I guess that was enough, right? When you see three guys go, <laughs> they get two thumbs up for having uh, three guys run for 100 yards against the Dukes, who – by the way, beat my alma mater, Ohio, last year, so I'm still holding that against them. Um, LSU's uh -huh. interesting, obviously. I, you know why I think it is, Scott? I think people want BK to lose. I think they want LSU to flop so they can tweet about Brian Kelly all night. I actually like the Tigers in this game, 16-5 and all-time in the Superdome, uh, the Caesars Superdome now. I think he works both quarterbacks in. They, they score and create a couple turnovers with their pass rush. It could be a fun game, though. I mean, that line being that low does have my attention. What do you think of uh, Clemson and Georgia Tech on Labor Day? Well, I think Clemson scored 77 on them a couple years ago and needed a goal line stand <laughs> last year. I don't know what, something in between probably. Um, Clemson's defense is going to be gross 
going to be dirty with Brian Brasid, Miles Murphy, Trenton Simpson, all first round picks. It really comes down to the quarterback qu- question. And I've learned how to say D- DJ Uangalele over the years, but now I'm going to have to learn how to say Cade Klubnick because if DJ struggles, they're going to want to see the five star from uh, Texas. And that could be the difference. I do think Clemson's the best team in the ACC. I think they are going to get back into the playoff. But my question isn't, can they get to the playoff? It's what does it look like when they do? Are they going to get smacked around by LSU and Ohio State? Or are they going to be that team that knocked out Nick Saban a couple times? And I think, again, it's anywhere in between. Who do you like tonight, uh, Penn State at Purdue? I like Penn State, but it's going to be fun. And if I'm channel surfing tonight, I know there's a lot of attention on the backyard brawl, and, and dutifully so. I mean, as neighboring states to me here, those those two hate each other, and it's going to be fun. But that Penn State-Purdue game, there's going to be a lot of points. I think Aiden O'Connell's going to light it up. I, I like the over in this game. And I'll give you a name, Nick Singleton, the freshman running back from Penn State. If he uh, starts trending, it's going to be good because he makes a couple nice runs. I heard you talking about James Franklin. They're stuck with him. They're stuck with him, and and they better win with him this year because you're not paying him that much, Scott, and dumping him. Hey, Bill, you're the best. Uh, It's great having you on uh, the TV side here, finally, on Coast to Coast. We'll catch up throughout the season. Enjoy the weekend of games through Labor Day. It's great seeing you, buddy. All the best. Anytime. Thanks so much. Bill Bender of the Sporting News. He says he can kick Mike the course's ass in a pistol. The morning after. What did you make of this decision by San Francisco to retain Jimmy Garoppolo, have him on the roster in the QB room for 2022? Well, what we heard the entire offseason was how the 49ers were trying to shop Jimmy G the entire time. But they weren't hearing back great offers. Now, it doesn't mean he's going to be there for the whole entire season. As you know, it gives them about two more months before the trade deadline, and they could actually move him before then. The Sports Grid Network. They sent out a Jordan Montgomery, who evidently is the best pitcher in baseball. I know it's the Cubs. I don't care. But it looks like maybe word is getting out that, you know what? We don't really have an offensive coordinator. Why don't you guys get used to calling real plays with real players in the game and see if we can work something out over, let's just say, the first half. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Cam Akers was one of the bigger stories of last year, returning very early from an ACL injury. And, uh, and, and you know, what a, what a really great story it was, but unfortunately didn't look very good when he came back. Now, a lot can be attributed to that, and I guess that's why we'll do a deeper dive here. His ADP is 18 in terms of running backs taken. His positional ranking is 18, and overall is going approximately in the third round. The Sports Grid Network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free 
at SICscore.com. Fast forward, Pharrell, and your facial, the Pharrell finish. A 20-year-old Canadian junior hockey player died during a preseason game, Carver High. We can't have it. New Jersey banned plastic bags, so people are stealing grocery store shopping baskets. What are you going to do with that? Like, uh, what, what are you, keeping it in your garage? You bring it to the store every time? Just get the bags that you can put the groceries in, idiot. I mean, what do you do with the grocery cart? Racing down the street with it, with your neighbors? Former leader of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Gorbachev, died this week at 91. He ended the Cold War with your boy Ronald Reagan. 93-year-old dies after mistakenly being served dishwashing liquid at a living facility, Carver High. Here, have some Dawn for breakfast, Pops. Boom, dead. Leo DiCaprio and his smoke show girlfriend, Camelia Maroney, break up after more than four years together. Mafia, can you get her on the phone, the number? Can you get her on? No? 34C will kill me? She'll cut off my pat. What? Go ahead. Mega heat wave uh, flashes dangerous warning signs for the West Coast. It's over a buck five everywhere in California. You lose. U.S. life expectancy drops sharply. For the second consecutive decline, Carver High, we are living shorter lives. And here's why. Ultra processed foods are causing cancer and early deaths. Have another hot dog, (laughs) Carver High, when we go to the baseball game in the water at Yankee Stadium. Pilot threatened to end a flight due to passengers in the back of the plane sending airdrop nude photos to the pilot. Some chick wanted to sleep with a pilot, so she sent him nudes. He wasn't having it. Oklahoma teacher accused of raping a minor while his wife and daughter were out of town. Hey, listen, my wife and daughter are out of town. What are you doing tonight? Oh, it's all right if you're 12. Oh, my God. What is happening here? Florida Mongols biker gang member indicted for executing a suspected snitch. They lobbed his head off. I love the Mayans. GTD is matched. I need a mile on Coast to Coast. 